And I'm happy for everybody that decided to participate today. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to play some games together today. And let's go ahead and get everything started and going. All right. So today's group activity, we're going to do an activity that has us dealing with different things. Going for goals. Let's try that one first. When you're dealing with things, you're going for goals, whether it's at school or in the playing field, it's always good to develop your skills, to aim to be the best that you can possibly be. And here are some of the best ways you can improve the skills you have and set your sights towards building up some new ones. So the first thing we're going to discuss today is goal setting. Getting a peer, someone about your age, like your buddy, who knows the skill you want to teach and wants to teach you is a very good way to learn some new things because like for example will may be better at one thing than tony is or tony may be better at something else than will is so the two of you can work together and teach each other new things and they can pass on tricks that they've used to learn the skill that you may want to learn and vice versa so it's always good to have a friend that you can learn with so it says here let's go into this practice when you're practicing some things, of course, practice makes perfect. So they say, do you ever wonder who they quote unquote are that say all these different things? Well, to keep the skills that you do have at your peak, you have to find regular time to practice them. Otherwise, you will forget. Practice makes perfect. When you're learning something, you have to do it over and over and over again in order for you to understand the skill that you're practicing. You can't just do it one time and that's it. Let's yeah. go back. We did the peer tutoring, goal setting. There's no point in trying to learn a new skill if you don't have some kind of a goal. So the first thing you have to do is set a goal. Try something like, for example, I want to play soccer for my area or I want to really understand this new software program. Mm -hmm. Something along those lines will help you to be able to set a goal. And then finally, seek out a specialist. Sometimes it's just too difficult to learn a new skill all by yourself. Or for example, you may want to learn how to speak Swahili. Well, if you don't know how to speak it and your parents don't know how to speak it, then you're going to have to have a coach or a tutor or a teacher that can actually take you step by step and help you to learn how to do whatever it is you're trying to do. So your coach or tutor can help you to achieve your goals and stop you from learning any bad habits that you may have learned on your own. Any questions so far? I don't have any questions. Okay. So Ryan said, what would happen if someone that's trying to teach you became jealous of you? What do you guys think you should do if your teacher got jealous of you? stop being taught by them and find someone else yes exactly will perfect answer your teacher should not be jealous of you well unfortunately some stranger things have happened so again that's pretty much goal setting seeking out specialists practice makes perfect and your peer tutoring and that's the whole purpose of us having a buddy so that you have someone around your age group that you can work with and that you guys can help get some things done. Well, let's go to problem solving. Here she goes. All right. You come across a problem every day, and sometimes they seem to be easy, and at other times your day seems to be full of nothing else but problems. So what can you solve versus seven problem-solving steps? Let's go into what can you solve. Some people find it easy to ignore problems, hoping that they'll fix themselves somehow while other people try to solve every problem they see, whether it is their business or not. Whatever type you are, it's important to know which problems you can and should solve. What you can try to do is up to you. But here's some tips that you can use to help fight battles so you don't have to do it alone. So tip number one, if the problem is yours, yours alone, the first question you should ask yourself is, can I solve this problem myself? It's not good to make everyone else fight your battles for you if you can do it. Tip number one. So when you're having an issue, see if it's something that you yourself can solve. Okay, let's see what the next tip is. Tip two. If you know you can't deal with the problem yourself, don't try to take it alone. Get help from people you know and trust. 
tip three. If the problem is someone else's, before you try to solve it for them, think a bit and ask them if they want help. Because everybody doesn't want help. They may not want you to solve their problem, or it might be better if they solved it themselves. Or it might even be none of your business. Like you got some people who are just nosy. You ever dealt with nosy people? Anybody dealt with somebody who's just nosy and aggravating? Yes. And sometimes you don't want these people in your business, right? So you have to qualify stuff and make sure it's something that you should even be putting your nose in. And then the fourth tip, there are little problems and there are big problems. And if you are concerned about the state of the environment, for example, there's no way you can solve it on your own. But you can do things to help out in your local area. Every little bit helps. And you should feel happy for achieving what you can. Okay? So, again, when you're dealing with problems, you have to figure out, is it something I can solve? Can I solve it on my own? And how can I make a difference? Some things are just a waste of energy dealing with because there's no way that you can solve it. Well, let's look at seven problem-solving steps. Number one, what is the problem? That's the first thing we need to figure out. Funnily enough, there's a question that is sometimes hard to ask. To put simply, a problem is a situation or something that you're not happy with. So the questions you need to ask yourself are, what is my current situation? And how would I like things to be? That's step one. Step two, you have to ask yourself, what caused this problem? Finding out what caused the problem can really be important in helping you solve it. This is something you need to be really honest with. If you're the cause of the problem, you need to say so. It's not a time to be blaming other people and being nasty. If the problem is to do with other people, you need to ask yourself, does knowing what caused the problem help me to solve it? Are there more causes other than the ones I've thought of? And how does it help me to solve my problem? Okay, so that's the second step. What caused the problem? Step three, think of ways to solve this problem. If it's possible, this is a good time to have other people with you to help with this stage. Think of as many different ways to solve the problem as you can. Don't worry if it sounds silly, because sometimes the silly suggestions can help you think of better ones. Write all of your ideas down. This is a step that we call brainstorming. Step four. Pick a way to solve it. When you choose the best plan from what you brainstorm, you should think of these things. Which idea will solve the problem in the best way? Quickest is the best way. Which idea can you do for real? Okay, like for example, you can't say something that's crazy, like I'll be Superman and fly to the top of the building and get all the criminals. That's not something you can really do. Can you actually do it? Do you have everything you need for it? Is your idea risky? If it is, are you happy with the risk? And can you afford to lose? Step five, make an action plan. It's time to take the plan that you chose and break it down into steps for you to achieve. Use these questions to help you make your plan. What do you need to make your own plan happen? Do you need anybody's help? Do you need any equipment? Do you need to work out what you have to say? What things will happen to tell you that it's going well? And how much time do you need to do it? So let's look at her example here, my plan by Emma. Emma says she's buying a fishbowl with a flat base. So she gets grilled for the top of tank. She puts it together and therefore now is successful. So her plan went well. And then step six, do it. You've got your problem. You've got a plan. Now you can do it. So ask yourself, is every step going the way I expected it to go? And are things happening on time? Because sometimes you come up with these plans, but once you get into it, things are not making sense. So then finally, step seven, check to see if it worked. If things are going wrong, was the plan a good one? Why is this happening? Should the plan be stopped? Should a new plan be made? Okay, so that's all the different steps that you would go through 
you're dealing with some things. Again, you can come back here and look at all of these. So step one again, what's the problem? Step two, what caused the problem? Step three, think of ways to solve your problem. Step four, pick a way to solve it. Step five, make an action plan. Step six, do it. And step seven, check to see if it works. Any questions about the seven problem solving steps? No. 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 Okay, pretty simple there. So let's get on out of here. Teamwork and problem solving go hand in hand. Here's what you have to do to work well as a team. Click on each word to find out more. The first thing you have to do if you're in a team is you have to participate. Everyone in your team should contribute towards solving your problem. That includes you. Just sitting back and letting everyone else do it all for you is not a good idea. So make sure you're getting in there and you're helping everyone else to achieve the goal. The next thing, we have to share. Participating is good, but taking over and keeping things to yourself isn't. You may think you're able to get the whole job done by yourself. However, other people will have suggestions and skills that you may not have even thought of. That's the point of working as a team. Make sure you share your ideas and tasks around and that other people do so as well. That way, it's going to be easier to get the job done. Next thing, you must listen. Listening is a part of sharing and process of teamwork. Everyone should have a say and let the team know what the ideas they have are. It's important to listen to everyone's ideas then use those ideas to help get new ideas. Even the simplest idea from the quietest team member may be just enough to get the help that you need to have the job done quicker. So it's important to listen to everyone. The next thing is questions. Try to ask questions in your group that help solve the problem and move things forward. Questions like, what do we need to achieve? Is there any way we can break this problem into smaller, easier tasks than what we have? And are there any better ways we can think of to solve the problem? Can help people think more clearly and focus on the task without you having to take over. So questions are important. Next, you want to persuade. With any group, there will be people who have different ideas, different points of view than you, but that's okay. Just remember that your ideas are important too. Make sure you explain and defend your point of view clearly and calmly. That way you can be sure that even if the group doesn't use your idea, you have contributed to solving the problem. And then finally, you want to deal with respect. Not everyone will have your point of view. So it's important to respect that. As long as everyone is working together to solve the problem, all ideas and suggestions should be accepted, encouraged, and taken seriously. If you respect what other people have to say, others should respect your ideas, even if they clash. The team should have the final say on whose idea is the one to use. So again, you're going to participate, you're going to share, listen, question, persuade, and Respect. All right, so that was our group activity for today. Let's keep on moving along. Buddy assignments. Tony and Will are buddies. Tiani and Terry are buddies. Soraya, Zachariah, and London are buddies. If your buddy didn't make it to the meeting today, then you can just stick on here with me because what we're about to do now, we're going to do a buddy activity and give you guys a chance to get to know each other. So today's activity is called the power of positivity, all right? And it says people who are positive can overcome anything, no matter how bad it seems. If you have a positive mindset, everything will work itself out. So thinking positive can most definitely get you through any type of difficult situation. When you have a stinky mind, a defeatist attitude, that's when negativity will breed negative results. So whatever you think is going to happen is what's going to happen. If you think everything will work itself out, nine times out of ten, everything will. But if you think, oh, this is terrible. Oh, I hate this. No one's going to like me. They're going to hate me. 
Then now I'm going to attend and that's what's going to happen because everything is mental. So in our buddy activity today, we're going to break into smaller groups. I'm going to put you guys in a group by yourself for probably about 20 minutes so you can chat and do this activity. What you're supposed to do with your buddy, step one, list something that has you worried. Okay, and again, you're in a small group with your buddy, so I won't be there with you so you guys can talk openly. And then step two, you're going to list what you have going for yourself. So even if, for example, you may say, I'm so worried that my next school year I won't have any friends. Then list all these things about you that could make people want to be your friend, like I'm nice, I'm kind, and just kind of discuss it with your buddy. Again, you guys have 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead now and put you into groups. All right. So basically, this is the homeschool network. If you have children who are home right now, this is a wonderful way for them to be able to interact with other kids. We have workshops, webinars, and different activities that they can do. Visit the website, www.thegoldenrace.org, and get your child enrolled today. Bye. Thanks for visiting.